Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stories. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code RUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. Hello? Hey, this is Joe Plummer. Who? Joe Plummer. Oh, Joe, what's up? Nothing. Uh, catch you in about Sorry, time. I guess I don't have your... Well, I, just, I, I don't like being surprised with phone calls. I guess I don't have your number saved, oh. but... Uh... Yeah, I guess we usually email. Uh, you still want me to email before you cl- I call you? Yeah, I, you know, I said to, to email my manager. I have texted you a couple times, but it seems like you've changed your number or something. I don't know. But anyways, I'm calling, just trying to get a tour story. Last time we talked, you said you were interested. I did? Yeah. Right. Well, so, yeah. Okay, so if you want to just email whatever the thing is to my manager and then I can take a look at it and we can try and set something up and I mean I don't know what your your summer is looking like uh well summer I, I mean we could do it right now we're on the phone here's what we should do okay just call me back in like an hour can you yeah. do that okay great yeah, because I'm probably not available in an hour, but if I am, then I could probably try and chat for like, got like a, maybe like a 30, 30 second window or something. I could fire off something exciting for you. I don't know. Okay. I can't tell if you're you annoyed. I'm just. All right, Joe. I'll talk to you later. Okay, man. Okay. Is that All right. It? Take care. Shit. Hey. Nick Thorburn is a guitarist, a singer, a writer, and a graphic novelist. He's also my friend and touring partner in the band Mr. Heavenly. In this episode, Nick tells us how he almost starts an Amber Alert in a Walmart and how he loses his roadie in the middle of winter in Baltimore. From Ruinous Media, this is Tour Stories. Early in the days of my touring life, I would say it was 2004, somewhere in the continental United States. And we stopped in early in the tour, I think, at a Walmart to pick up some maybe supplies. This was the unicorn. And um, we went into the Walmart. And my kind of, like, pal on that tour, he was, like, the Switzerland of the tour. He got along with everybody. He was also a kind of a scapegoat whenever anything went wrong. We would blame him. His name was Max Grody. And uh, he was our roadie, ostensibly, but all he really did was get drunk and occasionally sell merch, but mostly just relieve the pressure valve of our shared animosity. And so Max Grody and I were tracing around the Walmart. We didn't really have anything to do. Um, but then we were ready to leave, and we couldn't find our tour manager, Dan Sullivan. And I remembered as a kid being at, a, like, a Kmart or something and uh, getting lost from my mom and hearing my name called over the intercom in the department store come to aisle five or whatever and this gigantic walmart it seemed like a great way to get our tour manager so we could get ready and leave and so i went to the nearest employee and i realized like it wouldn't be really responsible of me to pay our you know 30 year old tour manager we can't find him can you put an announcement over the air 
So I fudged it a little bit, and I said, hey, my um, seven-year-old nephew, Dan Sullivan, and we can't seem to find him in the store. And her face turned kind of gray, and she said, what was he wearing? And I was like, oh, okay, well, he was wearing, you know, like a hooded sweatshirt and a t-shirt and jeans. And she's like, okay. She got on the intercom and she was like, we have a code 11. This is an amber uh, situation, shutting all doors. And then she, so she instructed um, all of these people to lock all the doors to the Walmart. I, of course, started panicking. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in some serious trouble here. And turn to Max Grody, and we, he and I are trying to figure out really quickly how to solve this. And uh, somehow, I guess Max disappeared for 30 seconds and then came back and said, um, we found him. He's out by the parking lot with his mom, like a cause for alarm. And all crisis was averted. But for a hot second there, I really thought that I had gotten in ourselves in some real hot water. I wasn't really thinking about the consequences of a child going missing in a Walmart. That was when I became a man. It, it, it seems like the most um, effective way to reach someone. And I thought it would be fun and lighthearted. Like, our manager, Dan, would hear his name right. over, the, over the thing. He'd get a kick. Harmless fun. Um, it would also get reunite us, and then we'd get on our way and get on to the next uh, city to play our show. So it seems to me like no losers in this one, but... Right, I could tell uh, you guys maybe being invited. Everyone's laughing, all the employees, you guys maybe having coffee with them. They yeah. come to the show. Right, we get a commit by tens out of the trunk and, you know, now we're, we're, we're forever uh, emblazoned on the walls of that Walmart, but, yeah. you know, it didn't work out, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> the ultimate roadie so we played a show in Baltimore and uh, he decided to hang out at the venue after the show and we we were all going to leave go back to our hotel which was I think the Holiday Inn on that kind of the outskirts of town or something it was like the dead of winter it was February also 2004 also the uniforms so we left him, and our manager, you know, just to make sure he had enough money to get a taxi home, gave him $20 and told him the address, Holiday Inn, Edge of Town. So he goes um, on his merry way. He met these two ladies, and he went with them to their house, I think. And on the way to their house, they get in this crazy car accident. And they're super rattled, but he still goes back to their house. And he's, they're watching a movie or something, and then he realizes it's really late and he's got to go. And with his last $20, this is like all the money he had, he calls up a cab, and of course he lost the paper with the address, but he remembered the Holiday Inn. So he takes this, this cab to the Holiday Inn on the edge of town, and this cab, he's like, okay, I know where that is. Gets out, goes, gets into the hotel, and gets to the front desk and is like, um, I'm with this party, I'm with the unicorns, with Dan Seligman, our manager. And the guy uh, at the hotel front desk says, there's no one here by that name, but there is a Holiday Inn on the other side of town. Maybe you're uh -oh. thinking of that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like 3, 4 in the morning, and um, he, this was pre-cell phone days. Uh, our manager right. had a phone, but, but uh he had no real way to contact us. He had no money at this point. He'd like spent it all on drinks and um, the last little bit he had, he'd spent on this cab the wrong side of town. So he started walking at like four in the morning in the dead of winter in Baltimore through all the way back through town to the other side of town to try to find this holiday inn. Realized at a certain point he's not going to make it across town. So he goes into a strip mall as, as daylight is breaking, goes into a janitor's closet and desperately steals a janitor's jacket and sleeps in the janitor's nice winter coat. Um, 
So he wakes up, you know, he kind of comes to and it's the morning. He was sleeping, I think, on a, on a bench in the okay. mall. Then he's going, he's got to find us. Because he doesn't have any way to reach us. And meanwhile, we don't know where he is. We're waiting around by the venue, hoping he'll show up. And then at a certain point, it's like, well, we got to go. So we, we leave a note at the venue with 150 bucks, whatever the bus fare was in Philadelphia, the next town. And meanwhile, he has resigned himself from ever finding us. He's like, I don't know where I'm going to go. They've left the hotel. I think he called the other hotel and they were gone from a payphone. And then realizes that there's a check in the pocket. So he didn't know what to do. So he went to a soup kitchen. He started, He applied for a job as a, as a, as a dishwasher in a restaurant. And he got set up with a place to stay, like a men's shelter. Was fully just resigned. It was like, well, I live in Baltimore now. Just had given up completely. And then he had the bright idea to call his sister, Colette, in Canada, and ask her. He knew our, this was at a time when you knew people's phone numbers. So he knew right. our tour manager's cell phone number. So he got, got the wise idea at the, in the nick of time to call his sister, ask her to do a, a three way call. And then, you know, shamefully asked her to put the phone down and not listen in so she didn't have to hear. And then as we were on our way out of town, he, we were like literally in the van on our way out of town and Dan's phone rang and it was Max. And he was like, I'm, I'm here, you know, I think I got a, maybe got a job at this restaurant and I think I got a place to stay, but if you haven't left yet, please let me come with you. So we, we scooped him up and, um, and then he dropped the check off in the mailbox. He did like a good deed to, to make up for taking the guy's jacket, but that was that. One piece of technology, and you can fuck up all you want, but without that cell phone. I know. You can't mess up, or I guess you can, because you can make massive life changes. He could still be there. Thanks to Nick for the story. Check out our next episode with Buzz Osborne of the Melvins. King Buzzo. Check us out at ruinousmedia.com slash tour <laughs> stories. I found it. Guess it. Jackson. Polly. Fell off a truck near the beach. At least that's where I found it. Tried to move it for a record to haunt you.
Lifting my coat up To feel the pain in me Pick suddenly rolled up Afraid that this might happen Took out my box cut Faces like as it pushed against the canvas. I knelt down as I climbed right in what might have been the world's slowest getaway. But I still had David. Jackson calling. I still had David Gaffins. Jackson calling. I still had David Gaffins. Jackson calling.